Welcome back to Rock and Roll. And uh, in today's one, we're actually going to be reacting to the Springbok starting lineup for this game against Argentina. One of the first warm up games. And um, it's going to be interesting one, this because just uh, purely because, um, yeah, I've, I've, I thought that you'd find the Springboks get to a point where they kind of want to decide what kind of team they want to field and just build on that. They have totally changed the team again so they're pretty much doing um what i thought the all blacks should do this week um I've, i see the springboks do now let's let's face it where the all blacks are and where the springboks are right now is in very different positions um i think for the all blacks they're kind of very affirmative on what kind of team they want to pick um they still got some you know experimental stuff to do with some you know of the let's say their players on the bench they need to decide who those guys are going to be which i get but that's not big issues to have for the springboks on the other side they have a bit of a bigger challenge where they've got you know a, a lot of players here that they need to decide who they're going to take and it seems to me right up to the end which i think on the 8th which is next monday or sunday i think it's monday or even on the weekend, they will be announcing the squad that will be going to the World Cup. So the, I think, in a way, it's, it's, it's fair of them to say, let's give everyone a last run. Seeing that, you know, there's been some guys that's been outstanding, but there's been a lot of Springboks that's been kind of lukewarm, you know. They've been kind of decent in the one game, and they're not so great. So I think after this game all the players would probably have had two runs in two games a lot of the players that's fielding for the game to uh, on saturday against argentina is players that played in the australian side in the first game and then there's other players that really hasn't had that much of a run um, interesting that they've decided to make bongi and bonambi the captain for this one so really just experimenting totally all round because he's not been the captain of the Springboks as yet now um, if we look at that team uh, playing Trevor Naikane which hasn't had a lot of game time so it'll be interesting to see how he does in the scrum because he hasn't really featured in a Springbok jersey for a little while now um, a decent scrummager so it'll be interesting to see him Bunambi has had quite a lot of game time so we should get a good game from him uh, Thomas De Toy also he's come up here and there but he's not really played a lot of rugby like um that much so it'll be good to see him on the field as well then john klein gets another chance the the ex-island player born spring uh, south african player he had a very good game in their f his first game against australia so it'll be interesting him and marvin ori both being picked again for this game i think it was both of them for the australian game so it'll be interesting to see these two guys and how they go. If they really perform super well again, then you have to start asking, who's your four and five? Um, Ari, uh, it's going to be tough for him to lift, you know, the likes of Etzebeth out of a team. But um, going as the extra lock would be the question. Do you take John Klein? Who do you take? How many extra locks do you take? Those kind of questions that they have to answer. Then when we go look at um you know your loose trio uh they they're going for dion furry and, and I've, i'm really really glad they're giving this guy opportunity um just purely because i feel that the springboks have got a lot of carriers but we need smaller agile type players that fetches like the heinrich brousseau's of the world you know those type of players who used to get to the ball first and kind of get that jackal in try and steal some ball and just you know uh, very quick to get onto the loose balls because south africa really needs to get better at that again they they're usually pretty good at it and they do get it quite often they they um, will get two or three you know loose balls uh, or jackal a few balls and turn it around but for the most part they don't always get it right um it'll just be interesting to see a furry on the field and what kind of impact he can make franco mustard like i've said before the guy never does anything wrong but to me again like when you look at the options i just don't know we'll see this weekend how he performs then they're also giving jasper visa another run he was pretty quiet the last time he played so it'll be also be interesting to see what he does uh, uh quibus reinach has also had much better games before 
um, in previous years. He's not been outstanding when he's come on so far. It will be really good to also see what he will do. Um, Mani Lubbock at 10 again. I like the fact that they're playing Mani at 10 and no longer experimenting with at 10. That tells me something about the Springboks now. It tells me that they're starting to want to play Mani at Mani Lubbock at 10 and make him the established 10 along with Pollard, which is a very positive thing. Because the only way that Marnie Lubbock can improve is if he plays week after week. It's no more time to kind of be experimenting on that 10 position. I think it's important he plays. I think it's important he plays a lot, as much as possible, hopefully without any injuries, so that he can get more comfortable in that position, you know. Um, so I'm really glad. That's the one thing I'm really happy about, that they haven't changed the 10 and tried to keep experimenting there. They've kind of put him in there and they've decided Damien Willem, so rather 15, which I again like, you know, too much Vili Leroux, you know, I like Vili Leroux, Vili Leroux, one of the biggest, they've, they had a stat the other day, he's, he's got the most um, assist for tries because he's a good, you know, um, distributor of the ball. I know there's a lot of people that don't like that guy. Um, but then, you know, if you really look at his game and how often he's involved in creating tries, he is good. But you can't just play him all the time. You need to give a Damien Willems an opportunity to really, you know, get into his own. Because Damien Willems has just been put in that 10 position, which he wasn't comfortable. And he hasn't really had an opportunity to show what he can do at 15. Then looking at the wings, Mapimpi has not been outstanding um uh, in the, in this this whole uh you know build up to the world cup but he's getting another run which is good and then uh Kanan moody on the other wing such a good he's sometimes in the shadow of orange and colby but he's such a good quality player as well very good under the high ball blinding pace as well and don't underestimate him also uh, he would be my choice for you know, the extra wing to take over Mapimpi. But it will be interesting to see because I know they play 11 and 14, but you can always play around with your wings, you know. Um, and then lastly, you know, Andre Estrazen and Lucan Yoam. We can see there, I like that. I like it that they're playing Estrazen. Dele Lindy has not been in the best form uh, of late. Andre Estrazen has been in pretty good form against Australia. So I'm going to enjoy seeing that guy at 12. I think he's going to be good. And then seeing how he links up with Lucanio Arm, um, which, which seemed decent in the last game. So it's good to see Andre Estreza and Lucanio Arm um, to see how they'll do. Interesting, though, for me to see that um, Dele Lendi hasn't been given another run. Um, but yeah, let's see how this goes. Then, of course, you've got Joseph Dweba on the bench, which they'll obviously bring in... Um, also, uh, I'm not such a big fan of Dweba. Again, he's there, he does his job, but um, not nothing. Um, he works hard, but he's, he's, yeah, there's good options there, you know, with the likes of Marks and Bunambi. Um, Gerard Steenkamp, he was pulled up from the Bulls. Still a very young player. Um, he was pulled up as another prop, so it'll be good if to see if they put him in how he does, you know, against the big boys um, for the Springboks. Um, Vincent Koch there, uh, yeah, you can never go wrong there. That's a good, good guy to have on the bench. Bench. Another guy that I felt very has been very unlucky is John Luke Dupria. You know they've had him in the squad. They've barely played the guy. If if you go look at, you know he's been around for a long time, and I just feel that they haven't given him enough opportunities. Definitely not given him enough opportunities. He's been around for a long time, and and even in this whole build up, it's. He's again not even started. I don't know how they start John Luke Dupria from the bench and put Franco Mustard on from the start. Why they didn't give John Luke Dupria the start so he gets a full game and then put Franco Mustard on the uh, on the bench, I don't know because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Give John Luke Dupria a proper chance to prove himself and I guarantee you he could probably do well. You've then got Ivan Rus on the bench. He's been okay um also not been in the best form but also not done badly will be able uh, interesting to see what he can do we know he's capable of a lot if you've seen the stuff that he's done in the urc with the stormers uh herschel yankees on the bench yeah let's see how he, he goes when he comes on i'm glad that they're starting reinach and then bringing yankees second off but they're experimenting there jesse krill had a good game the last game so giving him another run and nothing wrong with that um 
So he'll come off the bench. Uh, he can be utility, so he can come in anywhere, really. And then lastly, Kurt Lee Orenser, which <laughs> I, I, I don't think they should play this guy too much. I'm too scared they're going to injure him before the World Cup. But yeah, great to have there if you need that pace, you know, and you want to play him, play him. But um, to me, a guy that should definitely be going to the World Cup. So they might as well just be experimenting with other players, but they've decided to put him in for the last one. So interesting. I would have never called this team for the last game, guys. I would not have called it. But it, clearly they want to give everyone a run. I feel very unlucky for a guy like a John Luke the Priya and even maybe a Ivan Ruiz in the amount of time they've, they've been able to play. Even a Herschel Yankees hasn't had a lot of game time. Um, but yeah, it's the way the cookie crumbles. What do I think is going to happen this week against Argentina? Well, <laughs> with the current form of the Springboks, I am very weary of what I should be saying because... Argentina is a formidable outfit at the moment. They'll be playing at home. I don't think the Springbok team is necessarily the best they can put on the field. Um, how should I do this and call against my own team? I don't want to do this. And most people will say, how can you do this? And I am a full-on Springbok supporter. But if I have to look out of a rugby supporter's perspective... I am concerned about this team. There's one of two things that will happen in this game. They'll either gel really well and just find their form or they're going to struggle and they will lose. In my opinion, I think they're going to struggle a bit just because it's all new combinations. They've put a totally new team on you and I can see what the likes of uh, Jock Ninaber will say in this game is, you know what, whatever happens, happens. We need to give everyone a run. That, that will be the attitude. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not even that disappointed if, if they come off a loss. They just want to test these players out. So in my opinion, I'd, I've got a feeling that they're going to have their first, not their first loss, but a loss in Argentina this weekend with that type of team. It's not that the team is bad. It's that it's all new combinations that they've put together. And that concerns me. A whole lot of new combinations in this team. How am I supposed to say this team's going to beat Argentina on the form that Argentina's at at the moment? They've beat Australia. And, you know, Michael Cech has done great things with this team. They're playing at home, Argentina. They're going to come out firing. And I'm just concerned with so many new combinations. It's got either pull off with the likes of, a, you know, Andre Estrazen and Lucanio Arm. Maybe it pulls off. And maybe a Reinach and a Marnie Lubbock really uh, plays well together. Um, if it all pulls off... Yes, then the Springboks will be competitive and they could pull the win off. Alternatively, I think it's going to be a loss for the Springboks. You know, the, the, the fire is not going to be there when you keep changing the players. So the players that last week had a loss, um, you know, might then turn, turn around and not have the same kind. Or now I'm saying last week had a loss. It felt to me as a Springbok supporter as a loss. By just winning by one point against Argentina on Loftus. That's how it felt to me. Because the Springboks should be more convincing at home. But anyway, yeah. So they won. But a lot of those players will come off and be not in this team. So there will be no kind of like fire to want to win this game. It's all kind of new players. I know they will all be individually trying to play to prove to the coach Ninaba. Look, we are the right guy for this this opportunity but at the same time i have to say individualism is not really what you need now individualism is not going to do it we know from a, a, a springbok coaching perspective all that they are saying is we are trying out all combinations and we're giving everyone opportunity um, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it's gonna be fun for me to watch as a springbok supporter for us fans it's not nice when we see these coaches continuously experimenting when we're so close to a World Cup, in my opinion, they should have decided who they wanted to play by now and start giving, getting the right combinations in intact. There's only three games left. To experiment till this late, I don't really agree with that much. But hey, that's what they've done. Now, what this now means is that I have to, as a Springbok supporter, be realistic and say to myself, this is one of those games that, how much can I read in it? If the Springboks lose, because they've put on... A whole new team, all new combinations. And, I mean, Argentina's fired up. They've got themselves going well, and they're playing at home. So, 
yeah I'm, I'm not particularly happy that there's so many changes i would have said yes great you can give some guys a go but i was kept at least uh, you know 10 8 to 10 players in the team that you know you want to have with your starting type team and just build around it and play around it so i, I don't totally agree with the approach but that we know from the spring box you know they do coaches do what they do and um yeah it is what it is anyways guys um to all of you watching all black supporters spring box supporters anywhere else around the country thanks so much for your support and your comments i hear them all and i thank you so much for all your support we're on our way to that thousand subscriber mark please if if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button i know sometimes you watch these videos but you might forget to just uh you know do me that that favor if you can would be great otherwise i'll see you in the next one thanks bye